Well, praise God. God is so awesome. Well, praise God. We're talking about keys to biblical prosperity. You know, God wants us to prosper in our lives. Amen? Amen. And uh, he wants us to, be, uh, to increase and be blessed. If you have your Bibles, let's look at Genesis. Let's look at the book of Genesis, chapter 1. And let's look at this. Genesis is actually uh, called the book of beginnings. And uh, it, it all started in the book of Genesis. And look at verse 26. Amen. And it says here, Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over all the birds of the air, and over all the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. Now let's look at verse 28. I want you to focus on this this morning. Then God blessed them. Uh, I want to say this. God uh, is in the blessing business. Amen. And so when he created us, he already put a blessing on mankind. Look at your neighbor and say, you're blessed. You're blessed. And I think, some of the th I think the reason why some of us aren't really prospering like we need to as Christians, because we don't realize how blessed we are. Hello. I don't, I don't think we realize really how blessed we are. We, sometimes we look at what we don't have or focus on what we don't have, but we need to start focusing on what we do have. Amen. Amen. If you have Christ in your life, if you are saved, you are blessed. Yes. Amen. Amen. Because there's, there's, you know, over, there's 7 billion people in, on this planet. 7 billion. And uh, I believe statistically only 1 billion know Christ. So that's six billion that, that, that are not prospering right now in the spirit. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So you're blessed. Amen. Say I'm blessed. I'm blessed. So let's look at this. I said, then God blessed them and God said to them, now look at this, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea and over all the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So we see here that God said, be fruitful and multiply. So God wants us to be fruitful in, in our lives. He, wants, he, he has put a blessing on our lives to multiply. And that's more than just meaning having a lot of children, you know. Um, uh, it, it's multiplication in every area of our life. God wants to multiply us. He wants, to, uh, he wants us walking in, in the blessings that he has provided for us. And so we see here that, that he said that we need to be fruitful and we need to multiply. So God wants us being fruitful in our lives. He wants us bearing fruit. And so, and so that's the key. If, um, if you look at, really, if you're really going to prosper in God, you've got you to look at what it says in, 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 in 1 John. Or actually, it's, um, it's in John. I think it's, uh, what is it? It's, uh, beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Third John, thank you. And so, um, so, so John was saying that, that he wants us... Now, John was very close to Jesus. John was one of his disciples. John was the one that actually, you know, he was a disciple of love. He was the only one that they could not, uh, you know, kill. You know, they, they, they martyred all the other disciples, all the other uh, apostles. But John, they try to martyr him. They say that they try to boil him in oil, but they could not kill him, so they banished him. Uh, on an island, that's where he did his greatest work, I believe, where he wrote the book of Revelation. And God still, even though he was trapped on an island, was able to get his greatest work out. I'm going to say this to you today. Even though you may be dealing with a problem today, even though you may feel like you're hemmed in, God still can work some glory through your life. God can still move some things in your life. Even though you may look like you're hemmed in today, that maybe that problem is holding you back today. I'm going to say there's nothing that can hold and stop the blessings of God from flowing into your life. Do you believe that today? Amen. It doesn't matter what's coming against you. What matters is what's on the inside of you. If you got Jesus on the inside of you, you have the greater one Amen. on the inside of you. And some of us might just need to shake it off today. Some of us might need to shake off whatever is ailing us today. Some of us just might need to shake it off. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? Look into your neighbor and say, just shake it off. And say, what, is the, what does the enemy do on Sunday mornings? He tries to get us in argument with our spouses. 
baby, you know. He tries to get us upset. Is that right? Does he do that? It, it's, just, it's just me. It's just, just my wife and I. It's just the pastors he works on. Because, you know, I seem to get mad as fire with my wife on Sunday morning. I don't know why. Anybody out there like that? Okay, well, we've got a couple honest people out there. So, so not this morning. My, we, I used to, but this morning, you know, I'm walking in love. Amen? I woke up this morning. I said, Lord, you know, how am I going to minister? I've been ministering on prosperity. What, are, what do you want me to say to the people today? And the Lord just gave me one word this morning. You know, it only takes one word that can change your life. You know, the most uh, important thing that you can get from God is direction or a word from him. You know, this whole Bible is filled with word. It's called logos. It's the written word of God. But what we, what we really need as Christians, we need the rhema word of God. A rhema word means a spoken word in due season. And so what we need is a word that God speaks to our heart to adjust us, to put us in that place that God wants us to be. Amen? You know, there's a lot of word in here, but you need illuminated word. You need word that's going to, oh, yeah, that's what I need this, to, this morning. That's, that's what I need to do. And so this morning, you know, I, I, I woke up and the Lord said attitude. I knew exactly what he was talking about. He was saying, you know, uh, we have to have a good attitude. Amen? Not a bad attitude. You know, you, you, you hear this every once in a while. They got attitude. Have you ever heard that? Okay. We got, and you know what that means. They got a rotten, stinking attitude. You don't want to be around them, right? But God wants us to have a good attitude. Say, have a good attitude. Yeah, yeah. Amen. And so, and so this is the key. This is the key to prospering in God is really our attitude towards the things of God, our attitude towards the word of God, our attitude towards other Christians, our attitude even towards the world, our attitude to even, even uh, dealing with our situation that we're dealing with. Your attitude has everything to do with it. I like what, what one's saying. It goes like this. It's attitude, not aptitude, that determines your altitude. You want me to say that three times fast? It's attitude, not aptitude, that determines your altitude. In other words, you know, your attitude will take you further. Uh, let's put it this way. An average smart guy that has a great attitude will go further than a, than a super smart guy with a bad attitude. In other words, you know, they say that it's the C, you know, they did a study on multimillionaires, people that were very wealthy, even in the world. And they showed that the, those people, a lot of these people, they had a C um, average. They were average in their, in their uh, intelligence. And they found that those people that, that had an average, they're running the big companies and they, and they hire the A people. In other words, the people with, with the intelligence. But it's the C people that has the right attitude. They just get the smart people in. <laughs> oh, you hear what I'm saying today? But it's your attitude, really, that determines your altitude. So that determines how far are you going to go in this life, in the natural and in the supernatural. Your attitude has everything to do with how far you go in life. Yeah. Amen. So I'm going to say this to you today is the devil is constantly working on our attitudes. Isn't he? Isn't he? And so a lot of times, you know, you ever get this thought, is it really worth being a Christian? You know, is it really worth it? It was easier before I got saved. It was easier. I didn't have to get up on Sunday morning, so I could go fishing on Sunday. It was easier. It seemed that way because you were in ignorance and you were under, you know, you were under... Uh, a different domain, the kingdom of darkness. And so you didn't really have those kind of pressures. Now you get over to kingdom of light, you got all this pressure. Have you ever thought about that? Man, before I was serving God, it seemed easy. Only because you were under, you know, a, a, a different kingdom, the devil didn't have to press you because he already had you. Amen. Right? He didn't have to push you because he already had you in his kingdom. Right. But once you made the switch to the kingdom of light... The devil say, now i got to work on that guy to get him back into the kingdom of darkness. i got to do everything I can to get him thrown in a towel, getting a bad attitude. You know, try to get him back over to that losing lifestyle. Is that what the enemy constantly tries to do? Tries to get us to shift back into the world system? 
get back into doing the things the world's way. Hey, you know, everybody cheats a little bit. Everybody skims a little bit. Not Christians. We don't cheat. We don't lie. Right. We don't chew. We don't go with the people that do. <laughs> <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying today? Yeah. Hallelujah. Some, some of you guys need to lighten up this morning. Amen. You're thinking, that pastor, what is he on this morning? It's called a great attitude. And so anyway, and you know, I'm fighting a headache right now. Man, my head is pounding. I mean, it's like bam, bam, you know, and the enemy said, I'm going to get him today. He's going to have a good attitude. I was talking to some of the people today and some of the workers and the greeters. And anybody ever seen Fantasy Island? Yeah. Let me see. Raise your hand if you've ever seen that. Oh, it's an old TV show. And on Fantasy Island, you know, the plane would come in. And then you had Tattoo. Remember Tattoo was, yeah. you know, Tattoo was the uh, midget, yeah. you know, on the show. And he would say, La Plane, La Plane. Anybody remember that? Yeah. And, then, and then I forgot the main character's name, but he was some, you know, really studious guy that would come up and he would say smiles everybody smiles yeah. now i'm going to say that to you smiles everybody yeah. smiles yeah. you know it takes less muscles to smile than to frown Amen. and i think a lot of times we get become a christian and we're like <laughs> carrying my cross for jesus pastor you know no man no listen jesus carried the cross yeah. jesus paid the price we have the victory. The Bible says that God causes us always to triumph. Always, even when it looks like a, you're never losing. It just appears that you may be losing. But you're not losing. You're learning. You're learning. You're going through a process because you are overcomers. You, each one of you are overcomers this morning. You overcame. You made it to church. And there are so many Christians thrown in the towel saying it's not worth it. I'm giving up church. And you know what? There are a lot of Christians that are doing that today. Don't fall in that line. The Bible says this, that there's, there's, there's some that are, they're avoiding church. And what they don't know is they're putting their soul in jeopardy. Amen. Because the devil wants to kill you. His job description is to steal, kill, and destroy, as it says in John 10.10. 10. And Jesus said, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Yes. Amen. And so we have to have that abundant life. And the only way we're going to do that is that our soul has to prosper. And that's the only way you're going to have true prosperity that your soul prospers. You know, every day there's a battle for your soul. The devil works on you trying to get you to go the dark side. And God's trying to draw you into to his marvelous light to do the right things. And there's a tear. And whoever controls your soul controls your destiny. Make sure God's controlling it. Amen. And so, you know, the Bible says, choose this day who you serve. Blessing or curse. You know, we have a choice every day. And so, you know, you just take this, like I said to one person, just take your Christian walk one day at a time. Just live in victory today. Overcome that temptation to sin today. Over, start doing it today. You'll find out in, to, tomorrow, just do it again. And you'll find out, you, you'll find as you keep doing that, you will have a legacy of faith. And you'll see the blessings of God come in your life. Amen? Now let's look at this. God wants us to prosper. I believe that. And, uh, and he's all about prospering us. But we have to get our, our attitudes right. And so let's look, at, let's look at something here. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 9. Hallelujah. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 9. I remember that uh, I was... I was uh, at Rhema, you may have heard this story. I was at a Bible seminar, and uh, Yin and I, and we were attending this Bible seminar, and we had a couple that was going through. They were ministers, but you know, even, you know, ministers go through a hard time too. Amen. You know, sometimes we go through uh, much tougher times than some of you out there. Amen. And uh, and so they were going through a hard time with their church, and they weren't seeing you know the growth, and it wasn't really doing well, and. Uh, they just kept talking to me, and, um, you know, sometimes God will give you a word, like I said this morning, and he gave me a word. He, that word was attitude. And I just said, you know, let's, let me pray for you, because I really didn't know how to counsel. They wanted my advice. And to tell you the truth, Pastor Dave, 
I, I have crummy advice. You don't want my advice. You want a God word. Amen. You don't want my advice. You, you don't want a man's advice. Amen. You, want God's, you want God's word. Yes. See, if God can get you a word, it will change you. My advice could be anything. The Lord. Are you hearing what I say today? But you want a, a man that can hear from God that can give you a word. That's why you need a pastor. Because you need a pastor to speak into your life. The Bible says pastors guard your souls. Amen. Amen. You want your soul guarded. Amen. And so I said to him, I said, well, let me pray. I didn't really know what to say to him. You know, I, you know. And so I said, well, let me pray. And as soon as I prayed, I got the word. It's called a word of knowledge. God will pop a word in your mind. And I got this word and I didn't want to tell her. And so I, I don't want to, I don't want to tell her, you know. And I knew what it was. You got a stinking attitude. You need to change it. Well, people don't want to hear that. You know, they don't want to hear that. They want to hear why, you know, when you, whenever somebody gives you a problem, they want, want you to cry with them. Oh, yeah, I understand. I would feel really bad, too. You know what I'm saying? People want you to cry with them. It's my party, and I cry if I want to. You'd cry, too, if it was happening to you, right? Right? Yeah, I want you to cry with me because you don't know the misery I've been going through. So, listen, I'm okay with that. And the Bible says cry with those who cry. But there's a point where you got to say, okay, you got to shake it off and keep moving forward. Amen. That's right. Are you there? Yeah, it's okay to cry a little bit. But don't cry your entire life. That's right. That's right. Amen? In other words, no cry babies in Exceed Life Church. Okay, I didn't go over too big. But, uh... So what we need to do is, yes, it's okay to cry, but there's going to be a time where you're going to have to brush yourself off. You get back up and keep moving forward. Amen. Amen. And so I just said to them, you know, you got to get your attitude right. And they, they, oh, thank you. I really appreciate that. And the rest of the Bible seminar, they avoided me like the plague. They didn't want to be around me. They didn't like my advice. But three months later, they called and they said they took the advice. They changed the way they looked at what they were going through. They got happy. They started praising God. And God turned, them, turned everything around. They got supernaturally out of debt. People started blessing them. Why? Because they changed their attitude. Amen. It was a rhema word. And so, and so here in 2 Corinthians 9, let's look at this in verse 6. Hallelujah. Did you find it? Just say amen. amen. It says here, but I say he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Amen. Some of us aren't prospering in God because we're not really, we're, we're sowing very little. We're, we're just, just, just skimming it. And, you know, you, if you want to really see some blessings, you have to sow bountifully. Jesus, put it, Jesus said it the same way in, in Luke 6.38. He says, by the measure you give, it will be measured back to you. So, so really, G, you, know, he, you know, Apostle Paul wrote this. He's just quoting what Jesus said. Jesus said the same thing in, in Luke 6.38. Give and it shall be given back to you. Press down, shake and gather, running over. By the measure you give, it will be measured back to you. So, so, so this is exactly what he's saying. He's saying, you know, it's how it, but not just us giving a lot, but it's our attitude behind it. And let's look at this because this is a key here to prospering. It says here, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Amen. Uh, well, yeah, let's look at this. But I say he who sows sparingly, I, I dropped down nine, but let's look back at six. But this, I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purpose in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Now look at that. Focus on it. God loves a cheerful giver. A lot of times when you're looking at scripture and you're trying, trying to understand how, what God is mean, meaning or what the writer's meaning by this, you know, he was... You know, the Apostle Paul was inspired by the Holy Spirit to write this. So if God loves a cheerful giver, then what is God displeased at? If we're not cheerful in our giving. If, yeah. So let's look at this. It says here, so, we, so, so let each one of us purpose in our heart, not grudgingly or out of necessity, 
For God loves a cheerful giver. So he doesn't want us begrudging, you know, he doesn't want us to be, you know, oh, man. And this, this is applied in every area. I'm not just talking about giving our, our finances. I'm talking about whatever we give to the Lord. Whatever we're sowing to the Lord. If it's, if it's you know, serving in the church on Sunday morning. Our attitude, our, our heart of our attitude has to be right. in our serving God. If we want to see blessings in our life, we have to have a right heart attitude in our service to God. You know, you know there's a lot of ministers and there's a lot of people that work in church that they, they're doing it because they know God's called them to, but they got a stinking attitude in it. Amen. And we got to change our heart attitude. Same thing with coming to church. You have to come in. If you want to see miracles in your life, if you want to see the blessings of God fall on you, you have to come with a, with a, a heart of a positive heart attitude, and you have to come with an expectant attitude, yes, an expectancy that God's going to do something. Yes, yes. Amen. And if we don't have, you know, if we don't have that expectancy and if we don't have a heart of gratitude, we may not see much. Amen. I like what one minister said. He said that if you want to expand, you know, your capacity to receive more from God. How many people want to expand their capacity to receive more from God? Amen. Then what we, he said, what we need to do is develop a heart attitude of gratitude, of thankfulness. Not thanking God because we're in a pit, but thanking God that he's, he can bring us out of that pit. Yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Not thanking God because we got in a car accident, but thank God that we walked away from the car accident. Yes. Amen? Yes. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? It's, it's, is the cup half full or is it half empty? When we look at the cup, oh man, that's half empty. Or is it half full? How is our attitude in, in how we... Look at life. And, and let's look at this because it says here, let's focus back on here. It says, so, it says here, so let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or out of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. More than just giving finances. Again, everything that we do as in, in our Christian life, we're sowing. Everything that we do, we sow. We sow our added, we sow everything. Our words, our seeds, what we say out of our mouths about people. We're sowing. Yes. Everything we're doing, we're sowing. Yes. So, so our heart attitude has to be, you know, you know what we're saying, what, we're, what, what are the seeds we're planting every day? Make sure you're, you're sowing seeds of grace out of your mouth. Amen? Make sure that you're walking in love. Amen? Now look at this. It says, um, for, look at eight. And God is able. Somebody say God's able. God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you will always have all sufficiency in all things that you may have an abundance for every good work. Notice that. That God will make all grace abound towards you, abound towards you, that you always have all sufficiency in all things that you may have an abundance for every good work. Amen. So we see this. That is connected to our heart attitude in our giving. You know, the abundance and, and, and uh, you know, walk in this abundant life in Christ is more than just having finances because you can have money and still be the, a sourpuss. You can, you can have all the money in the world and still look like you've been sucking on, on a dill pickle all your life. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hey, the, the money, money should add to your happiness. It should, it, should, it should be a tool for you to bless others. Yes. Amen. amen. Got a good amen there. Now let's look at this. Let's look at um, Isaiah. Uh, I used to go to this scripture quite often. But Isaiah 1, let's look at Isaiah 1. This is the Old Testament prophet. And let's look at Isaiah. And let's look at 1, chapter 1, verse 19. And um, if you found it, just say amen. amen. Now let's, let's, let's go up to 18 here. I, I'm keeping those people, if they're throwing up the scripture up here, hopping, amen. Let's look at verse 18 here. Isaiah 1, uh, uh, verse 18. It says, Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Now, we're, now, now, he's really talking about salvation here. 
But, but it's more than just salvation. It's all the blessings of God. Because within salvation, being saved means more than just going to heaven. It means that you are blessed in every area of your life. That means your sins are paid for, that, uh, that your healing's paid for, glory to God, and that your poverty's paid for, because Jesus became poor so that you could become rich. Amen. And so Jesus was stripped so that we could be clothed. Amen. And so, so it says here in verse 18, let us reason together. And then let's, in verse 19, it says, if you are willing and obedient, if you are willing and and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Now, I like that. So if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Another translation says you shall eat the best of the land. How many people want to eat the best in here? How many people want to eat out of trash cans? No, you don't want to do that. So, you know, oh, yeah, it's going to be a wonderful dinner tonight. No, you don't. You want to eat the best. How many people like to eat on fine china? Okay. But uh, as long as you don't have to wash the dishes. But... Some people like those paper plates, man. They put, put on paper plates and we just throw it away. And that's, that's cool, too. But uh, uh, back to, you know, uh, eating the best of the land. It, it, there's, there's two criteria. I, I remember listening to one minister. And uh, he believed that God wanted to prosper him, but he wasn't, you know, he wasn't prospering. He would preach it, but he wasn't seeing the prosperity in his life. And he was a pastor, and God called him actually to, to minister uh, in the field ministry, which means that God wanted him to go out to other churches, you know, resign his church and go out to other churches and minister truths of faith and help, help other churches grow and be blessed. And so he was doing that, but he noticed that, that he wasn't, you know, he would look at his finances and he said, God, I was more blessed when I was pastoring the church and you told me to go and I did, and, uh, but I'm not seeing the blessings. I should be blessed because I'm obeying you. And the Lord revealed to him and said, listen, you, you don't qualify for Isaiah 119 that you shall eat the best of the land. And, you know, the minister said God, that was like, you know, being punched in the stomach. He said, man, that was a low blow. What do you mean I'm out here doing what you want me to do? The guy said, yes, you're doing it, but you're doing it with a stinking attitude. He didn't put it that way. He said, you're, doing it, you're not doing it with a real willing attitude. You're obedient, but your willingness has to be worked on. You're, 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 you're doing it, but you're griping, complaining while you're doing it. You have an, you got a chip on your shoulder while you're doing it. Anybody ever done any, any work in here and had a chip on your shoulder? You know, you know, there's no grace in that. Have you noticed that you probably get hurt, you stub your toe, it doesn't work right, you're angry? Anybody ever work angry in here? Somebody say, well, I work better angry, Pastor. I get mad at my husband, and I can really clean the kitchen up. And... Uh, <laughs> But yeah, but it's real loud in the kitchen. Ping, ping, ping. What is mama doing in the kitchen? She's beating up the refrigerator, son. I don't know what she's doing. So, you know what I'm saying? You know, they're slamming everything around. Cupboards are being slammed. Honey, we're going to have to replace that cupboard. It's just got ripped off the hinges. Uh, listen, you know, boy, it's a nice, peaceful home in here. And it's, but are you hearing what I say today? How about your children? Anybody have children in here? How about when you ask you to do something and they, Johnny, you can take that trash out? Yeah, I'm going to get to it. You take it out now, young man. And he kicks that trash out. And it's all over the place. He's kicking it. What are you going to do to Johnny? Oh, thank you, Johnny. You did a great job. I'm so happy that you're obeying me. No, you got to take that boy, throw him down. Get, pick up that garbage. Get your attitude right. Right, Johnny. He he doesn't does he win? Does Johnny win your favor? No, no he he does the job, but he's not winning your favor, right? And so the minister said, you know, God, you know, I'm looking at my finances and I'm not doing any better. I'm obeying you. And guys, if you don't you don't you know reveal to him you don't qualify for that to eat the best of the land because your attitude's all wrong. You know, that minister said it only took him a couple minutes to get his attitude right. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? You know, you can change your attitude. You know, a police officer can pull you over, and you, you may be all upset. You may have been cursing that police officer that pulled you over. Hi, officer. How are you doing? Smiles, everybody. Did I do something wrong? 
right? We change our whole attitude. You're, you're arguing, fussing, and fighting, and the pastor knocks on the door. Pastor! Come on in. We were just, we were just having a good time praying. Cast, you know, casting some devils out. Yeah, we were just yelling, but it wasn't at each other. We were binding devils in here. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So we gotta, we, we got to work on our heart attitude. And so, so what is the enemy constantly working on? He's working on our flesh. He's trying to get us to look at the people that don't go to church that seem happier than us. He tried. Amen. The one that just bought the new boat. <laughs> the one that just, you know, hey, you know, we're going, th- you're going out on boating this morning. You're going to that church? Nah. Man, we're having fun. He tries to make you think that the world's having all this kind of fun. And, you know, for a season they are. And, you know, they could have fun for a long season. It could be so long that they, you know, that, they, that they're happy, to, you know, and they're living their life the way they want. But there is going to be judgment day. And there's going to be a day where you're going to have to stand before the judge of judges. And you're going to have to give an account for your life. And those that are living their lives for themselves without Jesus in it. Well, then they're, you know, they didn't want God down here. So they're not going to get God up in heaven. They chose to live their life without God. So what do they get? They get outer darkness. They get, they get an atmosphere without God in it. See, God's in our atmosphere. Even, you know, with sinners and everybody here, God is here. Goodness is still here. There's no goodness in hell. There's no, there's no grace in hell. There's nothing. Hell, what makes hell hell, it's void of God. God's out is not there. He's not in hell. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? That, you know, what makes heaven so great is God's full, God's in heaven, his throne's there, and his, his glory's there. And when you're in the glory, it's nothing but happiness, joy, ecstasy. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? But, uh, uh, but, th- but here, I like to say this earth realm, while you're living, it's middle ground. Which means there's glory here and there's some evil here. And so it's middle ground. You're going to have days of heaven and days of hell, even as a Christian. Yes. On those days of hell, you've got to press through Amen. and keep your eyes on Jesus. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? Yes. And then there's going to be heavenly days too. But even to the non-Christians, they have, they have hellish days too. Amen. They don't want you to see that. But they go through all kinds of turmoil. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So they don't have perfect days either. Amen. And so we got to look at that. But the enemy will try to make you look like they, they're doing better. No, they're not. And their end is going to be, you know, a pit if they don't change. Get Jesus in their equation. Amen. It's more than just a- actions. It's our attitude. And, and if we don't start changing the way our heart attitude is, we won't see the, the grace of God in our lives. See, God will not despise a contrite heart, a humble spirit. You know, i got to close this down, but uh, I remember there were 10 uh, leopards that came to Jesus and, and, and asked for healing. Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest and you'll have your healing. And it said 10 walked away, but one came back and saw as he was walking towards the... Because that's what they did when they were healed. They would present themselves to the priest and the priest would pronounce them clean because the leopards were, were outcasts in society. They weren't supposed to mix with regular people. So they could not... So the priest would bless them and say, okay, you know, you can mix with regular people now. And so, but this one leper came back to Jesus and said, and dropped down on his knees. And he was a foreigner. He wasn't even a Jew. And he dropped down to his knees and praised God, praised Jesus. And Jesus said, where's the other nine? Why aren't the other nine? See, I think we have this tendency not to have a thankful heart. It, it, it's, in, it's, it's in the flesh makeup not to be thankful. And, and, and the Bible said that that man that worshipped Jesus went away whole, which means that nothing was missing, nothing broken. Everything was restored. You could be healed, but not, you know, everything may not be restored. But, but he had everything restored. I'm going to say this to you today, that if we start changing our heart attitude, everything will be restored. And I believe even more than that, you'll get double for your trouble. Whatever the enemy stole from you, he's going to repay back double for your trouble. That's what he did for Job. He had to repay back double. Amen? 
Job got his heart right, prayed for his friends, and his captivity was turned around. Let's just go in prayer this morning. Father, I just thank you for your mercy, for your goodness, and for your love. And Father, I just thank you for every precious person here today. And Father, I know that you desire us to walk in full blessings. And I thank you, Lord God, as we adjust our heart attitudes, as we get positive about serving you, we will see full blessings in our lives. Perhaps you're here today. Maybe you um, uh, don't know Jesus. Maybe you don't know without, you never prayed the prayer. The prayer of receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you never prayed that prayer and with your heart and meant it with your heart, today's the day of salvation. God wants to usher you into his blessings. So if that's you today and you need prayer today, I want to pray for you today. Just raise your hand. Glory to God. I would be glad to pray for you. Amen. I see some hands. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise God. Well, let, let's just bow our heads. Keep our heads bowed in prayer. Uh, just repeat this after me and just say it like you mean it. Say, Heavenly Father, I believe Jesus died on the cross for my sins. Jesus, I believe you were raised from the dead. Jesus, I receive you now as my Lord and Savior. And I thank you for saving me today. Heavenly Father, I thank you and I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Praise.